So I just had the craziest weekend of my life. It involved traveling the farthest I've ever traveled for a video, spending four days in the GitHub headquarters, meeting tons of cool people, and competing against 170 other teenagers in one massive hackathon. But I'm getting ahead of myself. In order to tell this full story, let's start from the moment I found out about this thing. Okay, so I just got off the phone with a company called Hack Club, and they said that they're gonna fly me out to San Francisco for a convention where I'll be able to build a project using their supplies. And I said, great, awesome, sign me up. When is it? And they said, this Friday. That's four days. And this wouldn't be so daunting, except I have no idea what I'm gonna make. So let's get started. All right, so the hackathon is less than 24 hours away. But before we go to the hackathon, we're gonna need to go on a packathon. So I am a little bit concerned because some of the stuff I'm bringing looks pretty like, uh, I don't know, but it's checked. I think it'll be fine. I think the TSA will be fine. Now we pack the bag. So I had finished packing and I was feeling super confident, but now it was time to travel. So it is 4.30 in the morning. It's time to leave for the airport. All right, dad, if you could give me one solid piece of travel advice, what would it be? Uh, you want to find good cinnamon roll in the airport. You want to not miss your flight. Let's play did TSA take any of Will's things? So now that I knew that I had all of my stuff, I could finally make my way to the venue, which went great. So I'm trying to make my way to the hackathon venue. A little bit lost. I missed my train. Realized that I was at the wrong platform. I just missed my third train, but I eventually made it and it was finally time for day one. So after some icebreakers and an introductory presentation, I finally figured out what the hack I was gonna make. Okay, so I think I know what I'm gonna make, but I don't want anyone to take my idea and there's a little too many people out here to explain it. So I'm gonna take you somewhere a little bit more private. Okay, so I'm gonna take us into what is technically a sleeping room, but I don't think anyone's in there, so we should be fine. Here's the problem that I have. My girlfriend Olivia and I do this thing where we both read every day, at least two pages. If anyone misses that day, they have to buy the other person frozen yogurt. And we always follow that rule, right, Olivia? We buy the other person ice cream. And I read on a Kindle Paperwhite, which is great. My, my one problem with it is it's just got too many words. Look at this thing. Hold on. Hold on. I'm recording a YouTube oh. video for half. But no, you're totally fine. What do you want to? Really like okay. Um, like three minutes. Like three minutes. Okay. All right. All right. Look at this thing. Okay, look at all these words. I can't read all of those words. I want to make a Kindle that only displays one word. Okay, now I saw this thing online where there's a page that shows you one word at a time and it switches the word really fast in a sentence. So it kind of makes you read faster. I wanna make a tiny version of this Kindle using the e-ink displays that they have. Okay, so I've got my first three parts for this project. Let me, let me show you what they are. So this right here is a small e-ink display. It's the same kind of display used on Kindles and then this thing despite how small it is this is actually the computer that's gonna run the entire system and then this is the breadboard that I'm gonna use to put everything together for prototyping but I'm gonna start plugging this stuff together all right I feel tired do I look tired but it's all wired up and coded I just haven't uploaded it yet so we're gonna try that right now if anything shows up on this white rectangle I'm gonna lose it and then I'm gonna go to bed and if nothing shows up I'm gonna lose it and I'm gonna stay awake Nothing's happening. That's the main issue, I think. Uh. As Will figures that out, let's talk about the nonprofit that brought me here. If only there was like a guy I could talk to. Oh, there he is. Hey, I'm Zach. I'm founder of Hack Club. Uh, I started the organization when I was 16. 11 years later, 70,000 teenagers from all over the world make things, build projects, come to awesome events together. Every year, there are almost 100 in-person hackathons all over the world. We give away over a million dollars in free parts and electronics to teenagers to help them on their projects each year. And if you're 18 or under, you can be a part of Hack Club, like right now. If you put your address into the form at the bottom of this video, we will send you some free Hack Club stickers in the mail and you'll get invites to our next events, to our next grant programs, and hopefully you can build some awesome projects with other teenagers just like you and hopefully meet some friends too. Awesome. Now let's see how Will's doing. Ready? Didn't, nothing happened. Again, for the second time. What? A lot of waiting. 
I would like to go to bed. I ended up messing with these e-ink displays a little bit more and I think I'm just not going to get it to work. I don't think I'm going to get anything else productive done today, but I do feel like I've set myself back a day by messing with the e-ink displays for so long. But I learned something, so you know that's good, I guess. So now that I had finally made no progress on my project, I could get ready for bed. But it was a little bit hard sleeping knowing that this thing was going to be beside me. Okay, so it is day two, and I will say that last night was a very long night. I spent like five or six hours trying to get this little e-ink display to just show anything, and it just wasn't working. It was too finicky, but honestly, this thing has like no documentation, and I'm kind of done with it. Now, instead of that, I'm going to use this tiny OLED display. Uh, it's going to be super readable, and it's going to have obviously a much higher refresh rate, so I'm going to be able to show words in a much faster sequence. So I'm going to try and wire that in right now, and we'll see how it goes. All right, I found some quick test code online that I can test on this little setup I have here. Guys, it's not doing anything. Oh my god, look at that. Okay, this is awesome. Um, I'm gonna figure out how to just show simple text on there, but this is a huge, <laughs> this is a huge step for us. So that's really cool. All right, I hope this works. There we go, it works. Okay, so I actually have something super promising here. Got the computer, the OLED, and these two buttons. Okay, you see it'll advance by one word. So it says, I hope that this works, right? And you can hold it down and it kind of cycles through them. So it was time to make a casing for my electronics. But first, we all did this thing called demos, where you got to show off your project in its current stage to everyone else. I love reading. There are too many words smallest Kindle, and you know how many words it shows? One. One word. Thank you. And also, I got this neat little patch. So I really want to design the case for this thing because I want to get it 3D printed, but I don't really feel comfortable designing the case until I at least know the layout of the components. And for that, I need to make the perf board. Now, you might have heard on my channel when I talk about PCBs. PCBs are great for putting a bunch of electronic components on a board so that they can work together, but they take time to make. So I need to use a faster solution, even though it's a little bit more difficult, and that's perf board. So what I need to do is I need to figure out the layout out of all of these components, how they're going to wire together, and I need to route all of those wires by hand. Okay, so I've essentially finished the electronics for this part. All of the pieces on this perf board, you can see that I've mounted the computer on the back. I wanna make this product as small as it can possibly be, um, cause I just think that's cool. But from this point, I basically just need to refine the software a little bit and then do all of the 3D design for the case that surrounds it. Okay, so I got the first version of this case printed, and I, I think it looks pretty good, but there are also a couple of issues. This USB-C port isn't big enough. For now, I kind of ripped a hole in it. So I made a new design, and now I'm waiting for it to get printed. But I guess in the meantime, I should answer the question, how does this thing even work? First of all, I'm sorry about the hair. This is what editor will looks like, okay? But you're welcome for the shirt. Okay, so let's talk about how this thing actually works. Now, before we get into it, if you're not into the whole learning thing, which is fine, I made a little ad lib that you can do. So if you assign a word to each of these numbers, I'll show you the crazy story you made at the end of this learning corner. The hardware for this thing, the actual electronics, isn't too complicated. It, it's just the computer connected to the screen and two buttons. What I really think is interesting is the software because you can't just give this thing, say, a paragraph and expect it to know what to do. So here's how that works. The computer starts off with what's called a string. Now, I think this is easiest to conceptualize using a string of beads. So the computer starts off with this string of beads. Now, each of these beads represents a character, and there are a few white beads. These represent spaces. Now, the computer runs an algorithm that cuts this string where the white beads are, thus getting rid of the white beads and creating multiple strings out of this first string. We've just created an array of strings, which is actually what it's called in programming. Now, each of these strings, which are just 
just words, right? Because we've separated them at the spaces. Each of these strings is given a number. And the way our computer fetches each word is by using the number of that word. So we might start at zero and then we go to one, two, three, and four. And that's how the computer is able to take a sentence and turn it into words to display for us. Now, something interesting is that this thing can't actually hold a whole book. It can actually only hold about half a chapter. And I'm pretty sure it's a hardware limitation, but I'm not entirely sure why. However, you could help me figure it out. This project is open source, and I'll have Zach explain a little bit what open source means. You mentioned that term open source, which is, you know, a pretty big thing with Hack Club. Everything that's designed here is required to be open source, right? So what exactly does that mean? Open source is when you take all of the files, the code, the CAD, the schematics, and you put them online for free so other people can use them, learn from them, and incorporate them into their own projects. It's a way to learn from others, but more than that, it's like an ethos of like a ton of developers coming together because they love making things. So basically the code and the hardware and even the printing files are available on GitHub. And you can look over the code and comment below like why the storage on this is so small because I'm not really an expert on the Raspberry Pi, which is the type of computer that's in here. Whoa. That is a crazy Mad Lib. Put it in the comments. All right, and now it's time for day three. Wait, before we go to day three, I got version two of the case and I wanna talk about it a little bit. I really like it. I think this is our final product. The USB port is a little bit bigger and the buttons are right flush to the case. Okay, and now it's time for day three. Okay, so we're on day three. I worked so long yesterday that this thing is basically done. I spent a little bit of time adding some extra features, like it can do auto scrolling and you can change the speed of the auto scroll. And like when it hits a longer word, it'll slow down so that you can actually read it. Day three consisted of watching a few demos. And then I went to the Golden Gate Bridge with some friends. We actually took the bus, which went about as well as taking the train. We're lost. Yeah. Also, I was going to the Golden Gate Bridge to take a picture for a thumbnail, but it was really foggy. And that's why the bridge in my thumbnail looks really weird. And that night, I added some cool functionality to the read good. Uh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm calling it the read good, by the way. Okay, so it's 3.30 a.m. and the project is due technically today at eight, but I just added something software-wise to this that I think is pretty cool. So previously, I coded it so that the story was kind of hard-coded into the system. If you know about microcontrollers, I basically had the story in the flash memory of this, so I couldn't change what text it displayed without essentially reprogramming programming the whole thing. I didn't really like that because I feel like it doesn't give for a usable product. So I changed it to something a little more user friendly. Let me show you. Okay, so when I plug it in initially, it'll boot up and it actually opens this little USB drive directory. It says upload a file. You can actually drag a text file into this USB drive, which is this device, and it will immediately display it on the device. Now, I think this is super cool and it adds a lot of usability to the device, but there is one huge limitation and it's that the text file is actually loaded into this little computer's RAM. Now, if you know about computers, that means when I unplug this, it actually deletes the text altogether. Now, obviously, Obviously, this means that you can't download a story onto it and then take it wherever you want to go, but it's also 3.30 and I don't really have time to fix that. Oh my gosh, it's so late. At least he's going to bed. And now I'm going to take some time to finish the open source documentation. Oh. So it is 5 a.m. Most of the people have stayed up all night finishing their projects, but I've submitted my project, so I think it's about time to go to bed. Okay, so day four, um, my understanding of how today is gonna work is that we're all demoing our projects for the last time and then there's some sort of voting and there's a closing ceremony at 11. What I think is like crazy about this, just coming here, they they lined up all of the teenagers that organized it and it was, it was what? Isn't it like a group of 15 teenagers organized like the bulk of this hackathon? Everything you've experienced this weekend is 100% organized by teenagers. Everything in Hack Club that you see and you experience is built by teenagers like you. We believe that teenagers know what teenagers want best. It's not uh, really anything beyond that the teenagers themselves are organizing the events. Seeing all of the demos on day four was super cool. And there was a lot of really impressive stuff out there. In fact, I began to feel like I was in a little over my head. Okay, so I'm looking at some of these like more complex projects for the first time. How does this thing actually work? An XY gantry system, an OCR technology, um, an AI API uses its um, automated thinking solution 
and technology. A plethora of cleaning data of different varieties. So after the demos were done, we voted, and it was time to see if I'd placed in the top three. In third place, can I get a drum roll, please? Crazy controller! Woo! Second place, can I get a drum roll, please? I had done it. I had gotten second place. Now all there was left to do was to travel back home. And you know how great traveling goes for me. Hey guys, it's me. Uh, I'm talking to you through my mind because I'm in the back of an Uber. So not great. The event was going long and I was going to be late for my flight because I was going to have to take a train. But then Hack Club hooked me up with an Uber, which was pretty cool. But then when I got in the Uber, I realized I forgot my water bottle, which was not good. But now I get to buy a new water bottle. So that's pretty awesome. Wow. What an awesome event that I just got back from. Uh, seriously, this thing was super cool. Um, thanks to Hack Club and everyone involved in putting this hackathon together. It was called Undercity and I'll put their names right here. Huge thanks to them for flying me out there and, and just letting me be a part of it. Also, thank you so much to my patrons because the projects I make on this channel are expensive. And also, I'm so sorry to my patrons because I forgot to put your names at the end of the last video. So to make up for that, I'm gonna put them up twice this time. Look at that, wow, one, two. A couple more things, I'm gonna eventually be open sourcing the ISS project. I'll be busy for a little bit, but those will come out eventually. Uh, for details on that, you can check latest like YouTube text post thing. And then lastly, I think I'm gonna start doing Instagram. My link is in my bio and it's at Will Does Build on Instagram. Thanks so much. Bye guys.